I missed you guys so much. <laughs> Whoa. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Jive. 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 What? <laughs> We're going to have a conversation with Tonga Girl in the city. I see you. I see you. Let me just not waste time. Let me add you to this vibe and let's do this thing. Rose, Rose, it's a party! Ah! Uh, Hello! Hello! Hi! <laughs> how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? Here's the music, let's dance a little. What's that? Oh, look. <laughs> you see, I'm... <laughs> oh, let me welcome everybody. You good, though? I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm ready. I'm good. Having a good day. How are you? I am phenomenal. I'm super excited for this conversation. Let me, me greet too. the people. Everyone that's tuning in today, this is the first episode of the He Us Extra. Welcome, welcome, Wakanda, Wakanda forever. <laughs> Yay! I am super excited to have this conversation with you, and I can't wait to get into this conversation. Thank you for saying yes and welcome. Yes, of course, of course. Anything for you, my on screen husband. Yes, <laughs> we will definitely go. There. We'll definitely go there. So, for people who might be tuning in now or even later when they watch this, um, please um, tell them about yourself. Who don't know you, who might have never come across you, but who wants to know who you are and where you're from and what are you about? Um. Okay. Well, my name is Nyele Tindovani. Um, yes. Nyeleti is the Tsonga word for star, so I just like people to know that she is a star. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I'm an actress, um, like a little bit of TV, mostly theater. What else? I'm, I'm awesome. Well, yeah. in my opinion. And um, what else? I, I, I'm, I'm an avid reader. Mm. I. I like watching documentaries. My friends tease me a lot. They say that for an actress, I'm actually really boring because I'm a nerd. But you know what? I don't. I don't mind it. Yes, I'm a nerd, and yeah, that's what's up. That's a little bit of me, I guess. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. No, uh, we. It's good to know that, and people must know us actress. I'm also. I'm actors. I mean, I love uh, documentaries. I love reading. I'm an avid reader because I think that. For us to, I mean, Viola Davis once said something interesting. She said that the problem with the modern day actor, actress, is that they study other actors and not real life, you know? So when you're reading books and you are opening your own imagination and your own world as an artist to, to imagine the detective differently from what is being shown every day. Because exactly. when, we, when we study other actors, we end up just recycling the performances that we've seen over exactly. and over and over all right exactly. so what has what is your latest book you are reading now or what is the book that you've been reading and what has been interesting about that book um i like to read a lot of um autobiographies so i like yeah. reading people's stories so yeah. um for a bit i was reading like the the ANC struggle heroes. So I read Mamouini's autobiography. I read Long Walk to Freedom, finally. Um, just read Robert Subukwe's autobiography, blew my mind. He was amazing. Yeah. But um, now, but then it got a bit too heavy, you know, because it's yeah. a lot. It's a lot. It is. So I decided to take a bit of a breather. So right now I'm reading John Lennon's autobiography. Um, lead singer of the of the Beatles, and that's been amazing. So yeah, just trying to learn about people's stories and people's journeys, and I found that like it's actually it helps me with my own life because it's like oh snap, you went through, I'm going through that, and then you know just exactly. 
Exactly. Well, um, for the He Arts Extra, what this show is about is about giving the spotlight and celebrating you people's journeys, their experiences and learning from what they have learned, you know, as they travel the journey. But basically, it's about celebrating people who are the light beyond the spotlight, because a lot of people spend a lot of time in the spotlight and never really connect or find that shining star within themselves. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you, your parents said, Inyele Dimunloi, and she's going to be a star and she's going to shine. And today we're just celebrating the star that you are beyond the stage. All right. Yes. 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 So quickly, before we get into uh, your life story and how you grew up, I want to know if you were a fruit at this very moment, what fruit would you be? Which fruit would uh, capture? Your, your your mood, your thought process, your space at this very moment. Wowza. A fruit that would capture yeah. my current state. Yeah. Hmm. Let's see. Let's see. I think a pineapple. Ah. And you know why I say a pineapple? Because it's prickly, right? It's it's sweet on the inside, but then it's prickly outside. And and I'm a little bit prickly. I can be a little bit spicy. You know, people, <laughs> most people think that I'm just a nice little good girl. And look, I am a good girl. But don't come for me unless I sing for you. Okay. <laughs> don't mess with me. Otherwise, you will get pricked. So, yes, I am a girl. Yes. That's a beautiful, yes. sweet uh, uh, fruit. <laughs> and I mean, yes. I, I can tell with the hat as well, like you are just pain mm. pulling all the way to the roof. <laughs> I mean, I mean. <laughs> Looking yeah, very I'm beautiful. <laughs> all right. right, please take us to growing up. Uh, where were you born and where did you grow up and how was your childhood? Um, okay, well, I was, I was born at Karangua, but I grew up in Pretoria. I hope you can Social see me, Media. because, can you see me? I can see you, can you see me? Can you see me? No? Yeah, okay, we're back. We're back? Yay. Yeah. Um, I'm a Pretoria girl. Born and bred in Soshanguve. Soshanguve, what's up? Soshanguve, stand what's up. up? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm the last of three kids. Um, I'm mm. the last born, the drama queen, the princess. Uh, my father, he's now late. He was a doctor. My mom is um, my mom is retired now, but she was a nurse. So I grew up in a very academic house, and it was, you know, like books are important because my dad wanted all of us to become doctors. And then I came along and I was like, no, 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 no. She wants to be an actress. And that didn't go down well because my parents wanted me to either become a doctor or a lawyer, but I just felt like I will die for the rest of my life. No offense to doctors and lawyers out there. Thank you for the work that you do, but it was just not for me. Mm. So I... I yeah, went to finished high school and then straight afterwards I was like, I'm not even gonna waste time. Applied to the University of Pretoria, got in, studied drama for three years and then um so yeah, I finished and then my first job was in twenty ten. It was a role on generations. I played nurse keke it's all. Um that was insane. It was a good and a bad thing because it was like my first job was on Generations. I mean, hello. But it was so intimidating because I felt like I would have liked to work up to that. And now the yeah. fact that I started there and then I was making mistakes and then I'm, you know, I'm a student of the theater. So you, when you get on stage, you have to project and speak loud. And then I get on set and I'm busy projecting and they're like, yo, girl. Relax, I yeah. turn down. <laughs> All right, just learning little things. Pardon? Mm. Before we get into that life and generation, let's just go back quickly to growing up. When do you then decide that you want to study art? And is it a decision that you made? Or because a lot of people also like, no, I'm called to be in this art thing. And others are like, but who called you? What did they say? You know? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, what did they say? 
<laughs> so really, um, how how do, what what's your journey with art, and when did you realize that I want to be an actress and I'm going to study this? Com- and then, yeah, and how did you have that conversation? Because you tell us that your parents were like, no, you need to do something else. But how did yeah. you bring that conversation up? Um, so in grade six, Conte, oh. what's grade six? Yeah, it's primary school. Yes, then yeah. at four. And at four, yeah. So um, I went to an all girls school, um, St. Mary's DSG in Pretoria. Shout out St. Mary's DSG. What, what? Um, So now we had these plays that we had to do every week. And then I I came alive. And then the first play that we did when we performed it, um, when we all went forward to take our bows, when I went forward, I got a standing ovation and everyone was like, whoa. And I remember feeling like I never want this feeling to go away. I want to feel like this all the time. And then I was like, you know what? I think I want to become an actress. Then I went to him and I was like, yes, I'm becoming an actress. No one really took me seriously. It's like, ah, Nyeleti is being a diva again. But then in Matrik, they 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 saw that I she's serious. So <laughs> yeah, um fought with my parents for about it, hey? Like it it was it was a thing. Like they didn't really talk to me for a bit. Like it was a thing, but I stuck to my guns. I was like I am this is what I want. Like, there's nothing else that I want to do except this. So, yeah. And I, and I like the fact that you, I mean, because a lot of artists, like I said, will tell you this is my calling, but they want to, when you say who called you or how did this call come about, they can't tell you. And you can say that yeah. it was the exposure to yeah. performing and then yeah. the feeling of coming alive and being alive after doing what you were doing that drew you to this art so yeah. how how did you know that people could study this because a lot of people just know that oh i'm an actor yeah actor ko skolo neki actor ko sunday school ki actor ko community hall so i'm an actor why go study how did you get exactly. to the point of knowing that you needed to go study um, and what did that do for you so that's that's where reading comes in because now because I I I've been reading autobiographies and I watch documentaries so I watch documentaries and read books about people that inspire me and like I found that a common trend people people went to school for this it's not just because you look <laughs> good on camera or you like to act and then you just go and act like I realized that um the people that inspired me that were really really talented they went to school for it. So I figured, oh, so there's something that they must be getting from studying this to make Mm. them as awesome as they are. So if I want to be that awesome, maybe I should go to school for that too. And the thing is, a lot of people are not lucky enough to to have the opportunity to study this because, you know, our parents don't even take it seriously. And I was lucky that even though my parents didn't approve of it, they supported it. So oh. I I took that chance and I ran with it. And I was like, you know what? My parents aren't happy about it, but they're willing to pay for it. So I'm going to take my opportunity. And I didn't, I didn't mess around. I didn't waste time. I went in. I did my degree in record time because I also, I was so hungry for it. So I was like, I need to get this done. Let me just get this admin done so that I can do what I want to do. So, yeah. And when studying this thing, when studying art, what makes you choose University of Pretoria, Tux? Because there's VIRTS, there's UJ, there is, well, no, not UJ, there's VIRTS, there's TUT, there's University of Cape Town, and there's Rhodes. Yeah. So yeah. how do you end up, is it because you were closer to Pretoria? Honestly speaking, like, I wish I had some hectic answer for you. And I was like, no, it, it was honestly because my mom said, you will be close to home. If you're going to do this drama thing, you're going to do it here at Techies so that when we want to come and see you, we can just come and see you. Honestly speaking, that was the only reason. That was the only reason. <laughs> so you were traveling, you didn't uh, stay at Rays or anything like that. You were traveling from home to school and school. No, no, I had a flat that was close to campus so I could just walk oh. to school. So. Because, right. yeah, and I wanted to be in res so bad, but I didn't get a spot. But, yeah, that's one of the things That's one of the things that makes me sad about my varsity life. Like, I actually really wanted to be at res. But 
I made up for it. I made up for yeah. it. Because, hey, what are you going to do? So, yeah. <laughs> And I mean, I think a lot of people that were at Res would want to trade positions with you any day. They'll be like, oh my goodness, I would like to have my own flag. <laughs> <Wait. laughs> oh, wow. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Because that's really how life is. Most of the time, we want to, we wish we could have different experiences than the ones we have. But somebody is actually sitting somewhere and thinking, oh my goodness, if only I could have your experience, you know? Exactly. Because we always think the grass is greener on the other side, and sometimes it's not. It ain't. It ain't. And sometimes it is, but it's only because of all the crap that's going on on the other side. Exactly. I was going to mention that. <laughs> yes. I was going to use that other word with the S-H in the beginning, with but the then S-H. I was like... But <laughs> I feel it. I feel it. Because of the crap. Yes. Yeah. So, okay, here we are. You are at school. What did you learn about... What did studying the art form of acting and storytelling bring to you that you did not know or did not have at the time you entered the course? Um, I Some of the things that I picked up were that um, I always used to, like especially at family gatherings, I would stare at my family and I'd stare at my aunts and I'd stare at my cousins and everyone used to think that I was really strange because they were like, "How? what's wrong with you? Why are you out here stalking us? Why are you always staring? And then when I was young, I didn't, I also didn't get it. I, I'd always just find myself transfixed in a corner staring at everybody. And then when I got to varsity and you're studying, I realized that I was observing. And that's one of the things that makes a good actor if you're if you're observant. So I was observing them because now, like when I especially with my theater work, like when I do when I'm trying to figure out characters and I'm working on characterizations, I can pull things and that things that my cousin does or things that my aunt does or my grand like my grandmothers were amazing so there's little things that I like to do that they used to do and I didn't realize that me staring and stalking my family the whole time was me observing and like me actually like I don't know it's like um I was forming like a I don't know like a thing in my mind yeah. That's a base of some sort in my mind. And then now I pull from those things. Mm-hmm. So that's one big thing that I got from varsity that I never really knew before. And then mm-hmm. after I grasped that, I now I really now I really when I when I observe people, I observe them with a purpose and yeah. I look at hand gestures and I look at inflections with the voice, just little things like that. And it makes a difference. It and does. Then what else? What else did I learn? Um, oh, watching movies differently. Wow, be going going to school and learning about drama. You will watch things, plays, movies. You just watch mm-hmm. things differently. And I realized that before I was literally just watching things passively and just laughing at, you know, the obvious jokes or whatever. But now I could pause something that I'm watching and be like rolling on the floor laughing and not necessarily because of what was said but because of the subtext Uh, and because of camera angles and because of a certain thing with the pass me by but uh, you know the connection situation is a lot huh it's a lot hey yo but at least we keep getting it back (laughs) <laughs> yeah, no, we'll keep getting it back. We'll keep fighting this thing because this conversation has to happen. <laughs> yes, honey. Yes. So, so and I, I like what you're saying because a lot of times I tell people that we didn't go to drama school or acting school to learn how to act. What that yes. school does is that it contentizes you. It makes you conscious of the choices yes. that you make, of your environment, of why you do certain things. But it exactly. also... It's also a beautiful opportunity because, especially after you graduate, you realize how much of a privilege it was to be able to just think and worry about your craft every single day. Every and single day. Yeah, every single day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, it was just about the craft. Now exactly. it's about auditions, it's about mm-hmm. all the other things. And sometimes it even steals away from the craft itself, you know? Exactly. Exactly. So, 
let's speak about after graduation. Now, here you are, you're done with school, you're graduating, you're excited, you are like, I'm going to be part of the industry, and this is yes. 2010, right? Yes. yes. And this is also a new year. It's the FIFA World Cup. South Africa is in a buzz. Yes. You know? yes. And what happens for you? What happens uh, immediately? So now, um, I it's, it's 2010. I'm busy trying to get my driver's license. I'm learning how to drive. Um, I'm start, I just got my agent, so now I'm starting to go to auditions. So now I'm busy trying to learn the audition thing. And my agent also warned me, don't expect to be booking things, especially in the beginning. Just try to get used to the audition process. So that's what I'm doing. And then the one day she's like an audition for generations. So now I'm like, what? And then she's like, no, don't stress too much about it. I mean, if you can get it, that would be great. But more than that, just try to learn from this experience uh, because there's going to be more more of this type of audition coming up. So now just try to learn as best as you can. So I'm like, okay, I go to that audition. I'm shivering in my boots, but I go. And then I, when I get there, I'm seeing all these people like Connie Ferguson and Bo <laughs> Queen, and I'm just so starstruck and I'm like, what? Um, but then I got to the audition and then went in, nailed it because I practiced uh, literally for seven days. Like I, and wow. I had to sleep. But I practiced because I was like, what is generations? So then, <laughs> so then I do the audition and then not expecting to hear anything. I was just proud that I didn't mess up in the audition and I was at Generations, you know? So then um, a week later, they call me. Um, they call me back for a call back. When I get there, it's just me and this other girl. So I'm like, wow. So I made it to the top two. Wow. And then I do my call back. As I'm walking back to the car, when I get to the car and I'm busy, like as I'm unlocking my car, get the call, they're like, yes, you got the job. Come back and sign your contract. I'm like, what? <laughs> That was insane. So then we inside my contract and then I started and then yeah, um very nerve wracking experience, I'll be honest. Um Yeah like I mean, I wanna dive into that because firstly before we dive into the experience of being on generation, uh let's talk about what, did you feel that varsity prepared you enough for the art of auditioning? Because I feel that a lot of us are trained for the performance itself, what you do when you get the job. But very yeah. few are, are trained on the art of auditioning and how hectic yeah. that part is because you can't yeah. get the other part having not gone through this part, you know? So exactly. did you feel you were equipped enough for the audition process? I'll be honest, I didn't. I literally, yeah. I learned, I learned as, as I went. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I really, I really didn't. Um, and I think that they should really focus more on that because, True. Um, True. because um, in, in my years in the industry, I've come to realize that um, who, who, when you step into that audition room, it's not just about, can you remember your lines and hitting your marks? It's your audition starts literally from the time you walk into the door, into the room and you're like, good morning, your audition then starts. It's on, and, exactly. And a lot of people don't know that. And once I got to know that, once I figured that out, I, I realized I started booking more gigs because before... Mm. You go in and you're like, oh, hello, I'm Nyeleti, and you, you know, and then you, they'll be like, okay, whenever you're ready, then you start your scene. But the thing is, even if you're good in the scene, you don't know that you kind of messed up your chances because you were shaking and stuttering, yeah. and, you know. You already so, lost the job. You, you I always say this. Me. I say this when I speak to young actors. When I'm a young actor myself, but younger actors than me, I say to them, you book your job at Hello, and you lose yeah. it at Hello. So we were, we were now at the part of Generations. So how was that experience when you got into Generations? Yeah. That experience was nerve-wracking. It was amazing. I mean, mm. like, 
<laughs> like it was a dream of course but it was nerve-wracking like i was saying earlier i would have liked to work my way up to it mm. so now the fact that it was my first job i literally felt like a fish out of water like i i wasn't really sure of what i was doing the whole time i didn't really know because like theater works in its own way and tv works in its own way but then again soapies work in their own way exactly. so now like, <laughs> yo, so, so i had to learn on the job and like i had to like get it quick on my feet so yeah that was and i yeah. mean hi precious hey precious so coming <laughs> from a theater uh, background you were trained as a theater actor and normally the yes. theater process, we get time to work through a script and think about it and analyze it. But when you get yes. into screen work, like sometimes you can get the script today for tomorrow's shoot. So how did you deal with that when you are still transitioning, especially entering generation for the first time? Um, I mean, like I said, you know, the, the, my first couple of scenes, I was like projecting, I was really, really loud. And so it's things like that. So then they'll come and they'll tell you, and look, it's a bit embarrassing, but then you just have to remind yourself, well, hey, this is your first time, girl. How are you going to know any of these things? So, and I mean, I was lucky that I got to learn from amazing actors that I grew up watching and admiring mm -hmm. and amazing directors so um so yeah yeah like it was an amazing experience and now when i think about it at the time i hated the fact that i'm on this huge show and i feel like i suck and i don't really know what i'm doing but now looking back on it i think to myself you know what thank you god for you know exactly. letting it happen like that because, because now it's no more generation into the deep end but like i didn't sink i swam so mm. well done me mm. <laughs> and also i mean the production itself has changed uh, because you were in generation with the people that we knew as generation this was before the yeah. drama of the 16 and all of that so yeah. you were still there with sophie daba you know like yeah. and the i great. can yeah so i can imagine what that is like for a black child growing up in the hood. What did that mean mm -hmm. for you in your hood and in your family now that you were on SABC One during prime time? What did that do? What did that <laughs> what did um, that bring? You know what? Like I'll say this, like um one of my favorite stories to tell is that after I got the call that I got the generations job, I called my mom to tell her and she was actually at pick and pay shopping. And she says that she screamed. And then like, all I kept hearing was my baby is going to be on generations. My baby's going to be on generations. That's when I knew that, okay, this is not just a job. Like this is, gonna be something and it was like oh my word like and then when people started like recognizing me and they're like hey it gets off from generations I, like i remember there was a day when i got home and i was like snap i am Kekezo on generations dog exactly. like what exactly what? so i mean yeah like as a as a black child um that that said to me that I, like if i can do it like especially black girls i'm sorry like i have to represent for my okay. ladies like represent the ladies. It, 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 you know it's, it said to me that wow like we can do this like 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 if i can do it like of course all of you guys can do it and then it also said to me that like um i have nieces and girl cousins and like just the, the way they look at me now, like now they're not even afraid to dream. Like they're uh, like, but Auntie, Auntie is on TV. Started going to do uh, those parts. Excuse me, somebody is recognizing Papa Chahuk and Mama Li Chahuk. Hello. Ninja. <laughs> Y'all used to kill your parts in Guiani Land of Love. Thank you, I can. I can. Uh, right. <laughs> um what's this i joined baba dumas classes in 2012. i only started appearing in movango in 2017. Listen. and <laughs> listen and the thing is it was like 
it was a bit embarrassing because everyone would be like, ah, but like you're one of the best in the class and Bakduma likes you, like why aren't you on Mobango? And then it was weird because I'd see people passing me, people I started with and they're going on the show and I'm like, hmm, hmm, why can't I get on the show? <laughs> like it was so traumatic, but um, like I've I've learned in all the years I've known of Abdul, I've learned not to question his brilliance. He knows what he's doing, and I guess he maybe he didn't think I was ready then, mm-hmm. and maybe he thought that I'd be ready in 2017. Mm-hmm. So my character Kansani was there in 2017, but she's actually back this oh, year. I'm you? actually yeah. now. Thank you, thank you, thank you. and. Like, watch, guys. It's going to be so hot. Like, from where my character was back then and the things I'm doing now, I'm like, what? It's going to, like, I can't wait for everybody to see it. It's going to be so dope. So, yeah. And that's beautiful. It's... What's different? What do you think is different from you now getting back on set that, than back then? You know what? Um, uh, I don't know if I should give you the... The, the the nice the nice reason or if I should give you the literal reason like uh, both both um what's different now is that I've grown mm-hmm. um what's different now is that um I like this quote by what's her name by by Lauren Hill she says that to be an artist you need to live your life so you have something substantial to share with your audience mm-hmm. and like I couldn't agree with that more because like um, I had to, cause from when I was on Mobango in 2017 till now, I've been through some things. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> so I feel like, um, like maybe it was good cause yeah, cause I, that break in between, I didn't get it then, but I get it now. I feel like now I'm going to pump in so much more into my character. Mm. Um, because Back then, I was still a bit naive, but now I've, mm. I've lived and life has shown me things. So now all of that stuff that I've been through, I'm going to pump it into my role. Mm. Selves, awesome news. Hi, Selby. Hello, wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Thank you. So uh, now you are uh, in, 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 in Mubango and you are shooting, but I know that there was a time now recently, like before Mubango, after Land of Blood, where we would meet yes. at auditions and stuff, and things were not happening for both of us, <laughs> you know? Yes. They were not happening. <laughs> not how, happening. How do you stay motivated? What is your process to stay motivated? Um, so I read. We spoke mm-hmm. about that. Mm-hmm. I, I read, I dance, and I listen to music. Mm-hmm. Um, music helps. Like I, I, like I'm so sad that I can't sing. Cause mm-hmm. like when I see people like you and my other friends that can sing, you guys break my heart. Because mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, even me, I want to sing like <laughs> other children. Even but, me. Um, even me. So like I'm a performer, you know. Like it's in my blood. So like um, like for me, I don't even work out. I don't go to gym or anything like that. I dance out my stress. Mm. So. Um, I do a lot of reading, I do a lot of dancing, and like watching documentaries, guys, like watching watching other people's lives and watching their experiences and especially watching people like the other day I was watching Tina Turner's documentary. Uh. The fact that this woman had hits in six decades. Okay. This woman was beaten and abused by her husband who is was such a terrible man but she still became who she was Uh, it says to me whatever i'm going through uh, like if i just persist and if i just stay and i stick to my guns i can i can get to where i want to be it's not going to be easy to get there but i'll get there so here we are fast forward to 20 19 2019 in the beginning of the year uh south africa well i auditioned for guyan land of blood in 2018 and then um i didn't hear anything from them and in 2019 my agent calls me and says you're gonna play a character his name is chauke he's going to be only only um he's only gonna be in the first episode you're gonna die but he says, but I think you should take this. Because <laughs> I've been... You're going to die. 
guy, and, and I've been pestering him because you see, before I came uh, to Leon Gianni, I had returned from overseas. I did the Lion King, then I came back to South Africa, and coming back, I thought that because I've done an international production, I've toured, you know, I've done this, I'm going to come back and be on demand. You know, I'm a graduate, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm international now. Why not? But it was not the right now. It was not the reality. Audition after audition, it was a no and a no. Then I booked a job with the Children's Theatre. We did a touring production that we devised and performed. It was nominated for an a lady, so we're all excited. And like, we are an a lady uh, nomination nominated artist. But then after that, then there was just total silence, like total silence. I did Shrek. Then there was total silence until Kiana came. So the call comes at a time when I really need it. So I was going to take the job anyway because I really needed it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thing. <laughs> I was going to be... Love it. I, was, I needed the job. I was going to take it. Yeah. Secondly, I was going to take the job because for me it was important because it was going to be for the first time. We were part of history. The South Africa had yeah. never seen a Tonga production on television. Yes. And therefore, yes. we were going to be part of history. And that, for me, as a man who is a Tonga man, who regards himself as a Tonga man, though I'm, I, I'm a mixed culture, I always say I'm an intercultural child because I acknowledge yeah. my mother's contribution and the Zulu and how I was raised. And, and also, we're going to talk about that as well. But I felt that I needed to be part of this history. So here I am, and I get into the experience of Kiani. Now we're getting the first day. So you were not yet there. Because you only found out the yes. news letter. So here's the first day, having this table read, and next to me is Mum Candy. It's from, Ish. you know, it's with Obed, it's with Charles. Ish. And I'm like, what? Ish. And then Mum is going to me, and she sat next to me, and I was finished. I was like, yes. of course, of course. I was next to, I was actually literally, it was Mummy uh, Von Dubuo, it was Von Dubuo, uh, Mummy Von. Mam Lina, and then Andy, and me. And then this side is Fumani. And I'm just blown away by all these people in this room. The conversation that we're having, it was a life-changing experience for me as an actor. Then we come to travel to go shoot, and that's where I meet you. And I'm like, oh my goodness, this lady, I know her. She's so talented. And then they like, she's going to be your wife. And I'm like, oh, hi, wifey. And that's how this hi, situation started. <laughs> but what was that feeling like for you when you heard that you got the job and that you're going to play this character of Esther? Because I remember that there was a lot of conversation that we had, but how was it for people that don't know? Um, for you, when you received the news, you were going to play Esther. Um, it was, um, it was bittersweet. Mm. It was bittersweet because it's always great as an actor to get work. Mm. And like you said, I mean, Gianni Land of Blood was the first Tonga telenovela on South African screens. So, um, on that side of it, I was ecstatic to be a part of it because, um, yeah, because like you said, we auditioned in 2018. Yeah. So it was a long wait. I even forgot that I auditioned for it because yeah. I was like, I, if I haven't heard anything, that means that I didn't get it. But then, um, what's this? So, so I was excited. I really wanted to be on it because it speaks to representation. Because the yeah. thing is, my thing is that um, if I'm on this show, Oh my word. Can you wait a second? Because, like, my battery's gonna yeah. die. I just wanna put it on the charger. All right. All right. Um, well, I'm you. I, I will do an ad break. <laughs> we'll do an ad break for so long. I'll go to an ad break. All right. To Are you going to an ad break? Yeah, I'm gonna advertise my book. I'm gonna plug my book. So, guys, I've got plug a book. Yourself, buddy. I've got a book titled He Arts. It's a collection of short stories and poems. It's available on Amazon. You can download it right now, the electronic version. Hard copies, inbox me, and after lockdown, we'll find a situation of getting the book. Then we've got a CD available on Google, iTunes, and stuff like that. It's a contemporary gospel collection. It's titled Mbelu by Sipose to Sisang. Check it out. iTunes, Google Store, Amazon, uh, iGroove, the likes. Get it there. And yeah, she's back. The advert is gone. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you were still speaking Sorry. about the experience of it being bittersweet. 
So you were saying yes. the sweet part being the fact that it's the first in the continent and all of that. Yes. What was the bitter yes. part of, of the whole process? The bitter part of the whole process is that I I had um I lost my boyfriend mm. in December of twenty eighteen. Mm. So um so now we we started Gonche when did we shoot Kiani? April, ne? No, end of January. It was around the twenty eighth when we had the first conversation and then the first week of February. Oh, yes. we that. Yeah. So it was so soon. So like I was literally still healing. I was literally just still at my mother's house, like literally her having to force me to get out of bed every day. Sometimes me just watching TV, me just getting out of my bed, going to the TV room and watching TV was all I could do for the day because I was just going through the most. Uh So, um, so now I get this role on on the show. My agent calls me, and then I'm like, okay, you know what? Yes, everyone always says when you're going through something traumatic, sometimes if you throw yourself into your work, that will help. Mm. So now I'm thinking, okay, cool. That's what I'm going to do. Let's get to work. So now when my agent tells me that I've got the role, she's like, it's a role. Her name is Esther. I don't really know what her journey is. I don't know what what's up with her, but just go to the meeting in two days just go through and yeah just take the character we'll see what happens so i'm like okay cool yo do i not get into that production meeting with you guys that <laughs> do i not find out that esther is a widow mm. and her husband dies in the first episode what Oh. <laughs> so now I'm like, no, yeah. God, are you playing a trick on me? What is going on? I am not gonna lie. I I I love the fact that I was a part of the show. I hated the fact that I had to play that character. Mm-hmm. I would have loved to play someone who was totally removed from mm-hmm. what I was going through, so that when I go to work, it feels like I'm wearing, you mm-hmm. know, a different character. But now with this. I had to literally access my own emotions. Mm. So, uh, yeah, uh, and... Uh, and- Yes. And, and I mean, I think that even talking about just that, because as much as she was, you were going as actors, we sometimes have to perform under the most critical conditions. You know, you were still grieving, yeah. but you had bills to pay and you said yes to this opportunity only to find yeah. that this opportunity is forcing you to face the one thing that you're not yet ready to face. That wound is still open. But also this character, was not a beautiful character. She was not dolled up like the other girls in on set. You know, she was stripped naked yeah. to a where you wanted a bit of makeup, like eyeliner, please, just eyeliner. And they were like, no. That's a and uh, they were like, no, she's not a girl with no. makeup. So all of that. So you had to go through this phase of now understanding that South Africa has to see you in the most almost bare. But even worse yeah. than that, because of they like image, like they made you to be like somebody that you were almost not in real life, and then you you are pregnant and you have to go through the story and this loss of this husband. What did that do for you though on set? Did this help you to get healing in your real life story, or did this make that process even unbearable, even more unbearable? Um, before I answer that, I just want to say hi, hi, Gladwin, hi, babes, and I also want to say hi, Kensan Nikosa, fellow Tonga queen. Mwah, mwah, mwah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, um, you know what? I'm not gonna lie, after shooting, I would go back, like when we were in Guiani and we were you were next door to me yeah. at the at the yeah. hotel i would after i w- our chats and our cups of coffee and our midnight chat when we'd say good night i'd literally get to bed and i would cry myself to sleep yeah. because the days were just so it was heavy it, it was. was heavy mm. like it, the, the, it was so taxing and the things that we were like the scenes that I had to shoot and the things that I was tackling and it was just it was just a lot and the fact that like because Uba Duma in his class he teaches us about sense memory so I literally in order to make my part authentic 
I needed to dig into what I was really feeling. I couldn't ignore it. I couldn't push it to the side. Mm-hmm. I had to access it so that I could play the character well. Mm-hmm. So, oof, that was... I'm not going to lie. It, yeah. it, it wasn't the most fun thing I've ever done. And mm-hmm. and the fact that it just happened, it was so soon after what happened. Mm-hmm. Look, everyone that watched it, all my friends that have watched it say that it helped mm-hmm. my character. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. me as the person that was playing it, I, 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 it wasn't fun. Hey? And wasn't I mean, fun. that was not the only thing we were dealing with because you and I, I, I spoke earlier on about the fact that I'm, I, I refer to myself as being mixed cultural. Um, my yes. father is Tsonga from Mozambique. He came to South Africa. He married my mom, who was Zulu. And because the mother tongue, she nurses the child and the children spend more time with the mother. I love her. She's Zulu, Andrew. Though, and we do know Tsonga and we speak it because my dad will not speak to us anything but Songa, so we do speak that with him, but 90% of my time, 99%, I speak Isizulu because it's mom and my siblings. So part of the, I remember that part of your uh, dilemma as well during that time was that, that the fact that as much as you you always um, are waving the flag of being the Tsonga girl in the city and always embracing yourself and your tsonga about you, but you also were struggling with that fact because the script was in Tsutonga. Um, yeah. And you, we, I know that we felt that we needed to sound a certain way of dialect-wise, yeah. you know? Yeah. And um, so share that experience with the people, please. Um, that was tricky. Um, so I'm, my father was Tsonga, but my mother is, is Sutu. So now I grew up speaking Sutu. Um, in the part of Soshanguve that I'm from, it, it's a lot of Sutu people in that area. So I grew up speaking Sutu, and so now um, I'd only be exposed and speak Tonga to if we had family gatherings and then my cousins were there, or in December when we'd go to Bushbuck Ridge, Ibonamasha. So now... Um, so now that's the only time I was exposed to Tonga. Otherwise, I'm either speaking English or Sutu. So now I'm on this show and it's just Tonga and my character. There's no way that I can throw in English here and there because my character is a deep, deep Korean <laughs> Jay. She's like, <laughs> she's girl. she works at a banana farm. She's a good, you know, good little wife, you know, like good girl. So there's no way that she would speak and be like, um, so yeah, like that's not her. That's not her at all. So now I had to learn my lines in Zonga. And like you were saying, we were always scared about not wanting to sound funny. So now it's about learning these lines and then also making sure that your accent is on point. Because exactly. like... Because it's the first, because it's the first Tsonga telenovela on South African screens, we wanted, like, we wanted to make our Tsonga people proud. I remember I felt like that the whole time. I don't want to embarrass us. I don't want them to be like, ah, what's this now? Because Tsonga people are always so marginalized and we're always minimized and everyone always think so low of us mm. like i was like no we need to make sure that we kill it so that we can raise the flag for tonga people mm. and make them proud mm. so that was tricky mm. stayed up so late learning those lines so i hope i did a good job i did the best that i could yeah. do but yeah, it, was, it, was tricky. It, it was very beautiful it was very beautiful i mean uh just before we i even go to the next question that i wanted to ask i want to pass by to go back to what you're speaking about that we would come back from set and you would sleep yourself, you cry yourself to sleep. But the moments before that, I think maybe might have helped is some of the pressure because we would all come back on set and it would be your wise man, your Matabo, who played. Okay, I called <laughs> that character name Musa, Kensani, uh, Colin. <laughs> it would be the young cast, you know, together and we would chill, we would share meals, we would talk like until very late and then i would bounce yeah. and then everybody would go learn their lines so just that experience how was it for you because i think that helped us to bond as the youngsters yeah 
No, this Definitely. thing, oh, these ones are better than these ones. Everyone was there. Musa yeah. and Ken were going to be playing the lead roles, but they were chilling in the same room with Chauke and, you know, so was no ego, was no drama. Yeah, it was beautiful. Before I answer your question, I just want to say hi, Deeds. Hi, buddy. Mwah, 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 mwah. Um, <laughs> what was I gonna say? Yes, yeah, so that was amazing. I absolutely loved that because, like, sometimes when you work with actors, you know, like, or maybe because of the fact that there weren't any like really huge stars, um, that also helped us to connect and get along. Because, yeah, usually when you deal with actors, you have to know that you're gonna have to deal with egos <laughs> and all of that, but there was no egos whatsoever. Everybody just embraced each other. And I also think it's because we wanted we wanted like the show to be a success. We wanted it to be amazing. We wanted it to work. So there was no time for egos. Like yeah. we just yeah, it was all love. And I think what you touched on earlier on the importance of wanting the show to work and because it was a first time. But for me as well, Diana was so important, and that's why I'm so sad that it's not they did not renew it and they're not saying anything about it because for me it was important that Tsonga kids grow up and see that they can be lawyers. Musa's character for me was so important because we had yeah. never in South African TV seen a Tsonga guy as a lawyer. They were always the exactly. guy who's begging, the guy who's a low status, and all of a sudden we're seeing this guy. Yes, he was coming from a poor family, but he, he was a lawyer. Tisalan was a lawyer. You know, uh, Colin was a cop. So we kind of, for the first time, had representation of versatility for the Tonga people. And I think that is such a critical thing because in most places till today, you don't see people or actor Tongas, Tonga actors, I mean, um, playing very prominent big roles, you know? Exactly. And I, I remember Diesel, I mean, Fumani during the round table conversation the first day, he shared about how when he was on one set, of a popular soapy that's no more. Um, he spoke about how, when he spoke in Tonga, the director said, what language is that? Change that, huh. you know? Huh. And he was like, what? And he, he actually wow. was in tears when he shared this story. And today you still hear people thinking that Tonga speakers are not South African because people are yeah. so to that. So I think what Land of Blood did is put the culture forward. It's opened up the culture and the people to that we're more than just Shoma Josie and Papa Ben. We are lawyers, yeah. we are thinkers, we are doctors, we are yes. all these things. And above all, we are human, basically. You know? We're human, exactly. Exactly. I growing up was difficult. I think one of the other reasons which I'm regretting it now, but one of the biggest reasons why I gravitated so much towards my mother's language. Um, was because I was embarrassed to be Tonga because mm. I was always teased. Teased. Like if people knew that I was actually Tonga, because I speak Sutu, people would just assume that <laughs> I'm I'm Sutu. But then when they actually find out that I'm actually Tonga, like then the teasing starts, then the name starts and all of these <laughs> things. And then... Um, I, I like wearing colorful things. So now if people know that I'm Tonga and then I they see me all the time in yeah. colorful things like oh it's because of you going colorful back to your roots. <laughs> so now and then it's so annoying because it's like yeah. oh. so now I I I, I regret it now because had I had I embraced my Tonga culture mm. earlier, I'd be better in the language. But mm. I think I think maybe this is also the universe that was is like, oh, so you were embarrassed about your tongue and <laughs> in growing up. You will see flames now because the jobs that you are getting now need you to speak Tonga. Yeah. So now, because it's so weird, because this is now, Movango is now the third job that I'm doing and I need to speak Tonga. And I'm like, yo, 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 but, yeah. but I will do it. Hey? Do it, do it, do it, and you are doing it, and you are doing a great job. And I think that for me, it's a pity that the show has stopped, and I really think that they need to find a way to bring it back because yeah. for me, it did not touch on many social ills that it still needs to touch on. And so yeah. our people do need that representation. We do need that. So I want to speak back to then here with, uh, uh, I mean, I shot in February, 
I left you guys. You guys continued without me. And I remember how I missed chatting to you guys and being with you oh, guys. Buddy. You know, we would touch, chat on the phone, but it was not the same as when, because we, we had spent so much time together, you know, sharing meals, yeah. walking together, doing a lot of things together. But then my character dies. Obviously, I came there knowing that he's going to die. And I was okay about it until yeah. the first episode. Because then there was a viewing, and we then meet each other, and it's beautiful, and we are about to watch the screening. And I'm still okay, because I shot this thing so long time ago, I'm just excited to see you guys, you know? And then yeah. my character goes on screen, and there are people in the room, fellow colleagues, start clapping hands whenever Chauke is on screen, and they are laughing, and I'm like, wow. Because to me, it was just like, okay, you played the role, done. But to be acknowledged by the room meant a lot mm -hmm. and then twitter picks up chawuke later that night and starts making him a meme and he starts to train <laughs> <laughs> now you everyone is like, and now people are starting to my phone is going bananas my mom's phone is going bananas because they're like are you yes. really dead are you really dead what's gonna happen you killed it Aww. everyone Gonna happen, and I know that nothing's gonna happen now because it's done, it's finished. <laughs> <laughs> and you also can't say anything because you don't want to expose exactly. So I'm just like, no, tune in tomorrow, you will see. And I mean, for the for that because it played on a Wednesday, and that Thursday, and that Friday, Chauke was part of the focus because you were then the wife was looking for her husband, and everyone was yes. waiting for him. So throughout that week, he was the focus point. And in fact, for a longer time than that, and people started to speak about him. For me, that experience was one of the most beautiful but the most awful moments of my life because I was oh. now I was now because of I had made peace with the fact that I shot, I'm done, and that part was done. You know, I detached from that role. But when he came on screen and started to play that Wednesday, it's as though that see that that episode breathed life into this character and people started to speak about it my friends were sending me screenshots of conversations that are happening on twitter because i'm not on twitter and i was like oh my goodness what's happening and then for money sends me the song of that Guiani land of blood and I'm like, you know and it was a lot it was a lot it was a lot eh? it did bring up my hopes to the fact that say Mm, maybe they might bring him up. Maybe he might be a ghost. But truly speaking, as an actor, I know that they had written these things a long time ago and there was nothing that was going to happen. But I had to deal with that. How did, it, how did you deal with Esther's exit when your, party, when your time came to exit? Because you had also, you shot for a long time. But when the time came that she exited her story, how did, how did you deal with that ending? Um, look, it was difficult. It sucked. It sucked because um, it it was a challenging role for me mm. because, uh, like we were talking about earlier, with the Zonga and with what was happening in my life at the time. So it was really, really challenging. But I mean, this is what I want to do. I'm an exactly. actress, so I, you know, as challenging as it was, it, it was still, I still wanted to do it. So it broke my heart and I was really sad about it. But, you know, as an actress and look, I got, I had my first job um, at 2010. So I've, I've been in the game for, a for long bit, enough yeah. for a bit now. So you get used to it. It's like, okay, exactly. so contract finished. Okay, on to the next one. Exactly. What are we doing? What are we exactly. doing? So, exactly. yeah, it sucked. But yeah. then I had to yes. get myself together and yes. just move it along. Yeah. I think I think for me, because of I've done, I mean, I'm, I'm generally a person who gets involved in the process. And so the detaching is always hard. But when I mm. did detach because of I missed, I detached from it. And I was not ready because of the screen. This was my first on-screen real job. I had done a movie from Zanzi some years ago, but I don't really consider it my screen work. And this was my first time where I was really on set throughout the process, really went through the motions of being on set. So I consider this as my first gig. And I was never ready for what happens when it eventually comes to on TV. On TV. Because when the Zanzi one uh, was played on TV and people were excited, I was in Europe. I was in broad, like in the number one show on, on musical show. So it was like, oh, nice, it's on TV, but I'm here. But this time around, when this one happened, 
I did not have that I'm here because I was just home, <laughs> you know? And so that was, and then we were invited to the, to the radio show for the breakfast show. <laughs> audiences wanted to see us and talk to us. And that for me was another moment because the, the production team called me to say, are you available and are you willing? Because the people want to see you. So to me, it was also a hint, hint, maybe actually like mm. are you coming back. Mm. Are we considering that? And it didn't happen. So it was another situation of, ah, uh, nothing happened. But I, I was still happy about the production and I'm really supporting it. I'm so proud. I thought they were going to nominate Musa for best newcomer in the on-screen actor as a supporting or a lead. Mm -hmm. but I was so shocked. And that's also another thing because we are playing, some shows are playing on a CBC2. Um, I feel that sometimes the, even the judges of these uh, awards don't watch the marginalized shows, which yeah. is our yeah. languages, which is Venda, Chivenda, Chitonga, and sometimes your baby productions that are happening in the SABC2 space. And sometimes yes. the greatest thing, there are great talent that is birthed from those productions, but that never okay. gets to be seen. Anyway, before we are cut by time, because the time is going to cut us very shortly, what are you doing? What are you working on right now? What are your future prospects? What are your dreams? What can people do to support you in your journey of becoming, continuously becoming the better version of yourself? Wowza. Okay, well, um, right now, Movango is consuming all of my time. Because, um, yeah, even before we did this chat, I was busy trying to go through scripts. So I'm excited about Movango. Everyone should... Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> please, please, please watch Movango. Um, I'm not too sure when my episodes are going to start airing, um, but I think in about two or three months from now, but just watch Movango anyway, because Movango is awesome. Um, so I'm I'm busy with Movango right now, super focused on that, and I'm super excited about that. Like, yeah, yeah everyone should see it. Like, lots uh -huh. of nice goodies are coming up. And then um, I I'm writing, I'm writing, I'm constantly writing. Like I I don't know, like I have a. I have a show that I want to do. I have a feminist piece that I want to do with some of my other um, female actress friends. So um, I'm just trying to do Mubango and trying to do some gigs that can help me get money. Once I have money, I really want to try and pour it into that because, um, yeah, I, I'm a girl and I'm really inspired by the fact that I have nieces and I want to... I, I I see them, you know, sometimes I'll eavesdrop on them having conversations about boys and about what's going on at school. And um, I really want to instill in them what my parents instilled in me, the fact that don't don't be ashamed of the fact that you're a girl. The fact that you're a girl makes you even more golden. Exactly. So I want to instill that in them. I want to instill in them that they that they can do anything. I want to instill in them that they can chase their dreams because Auntie is doing it. So oh. um, so so yeah, I'm. I'm very much about female empowerment. I'm very much about girl power. Um, so I really just want to try and work as much as I can, try and make as much money as I can. And then after that, I just want to go on a crusade on just saving girls and yeah. doing it. All right. Now that you're busy speaking about girls, I want to read a piece. One of my pieces that I dedicated to women in my book is titled Ooh. "A." It's titled "A Womb Man." She, oh, nice. <laughs> she was not a rock because she was strong. She had to learn how to be a rock because life was hard. When he could excuse himself from his parenting responsibilities, she didn't have the luxury to walk away. Instead of breaking in front of her kids. She chose to be solid, strong, unshakable, heavy-spirited, hard, a rock. You strike a woman, you strike a rock, they chanted. Everyone celebrating her for her strength, she's wounded. Is that blood? Her periods? 
she's drowning from her, she's drowning from internal bleeding. Our rejection, abuse, and ignorance has caused her heart to weep. Death. Mm. When she falls to her grave, we will build museums in her honor. Call her a hero in her absence. When all she was looking for is to be seen as human, not just beautiful, not weak, not a sexual tool or our personal slave waiting to submit to her master, us, no, just human. We failed to see her. We failed to see that until she was no more. You strike a woman, she bleeds. You rape her, creation suffers. And when you kill her, we all die a slow death. She's no rock. She is a womb, man. Oh, yes, Hadi. Oh, my yeah. friend, but you are so talented. Like, so you're a poet, you're an actor, you're a singer. I can't even deal with you. Uh, no, my friend, I thank you so much for the conversation. I thank you for opening up. I know there's a lot that we needed to touch on, but another time we'll have this conversation. Today, I just thank you for being the star that you are, for continuing to respect the craft, and may you continue to grow. May your star shine brighter. May South Africa wake up to the force that you are. Oh, thank you so much, friend. And thank yes. you for this. And like, I really, I, I respect and admire what you're doing, my friend. Like, I think that the work that you're doing is so beautiful. And yeah. keep doing it, buddy, because thank we you. are seeing you. Thank we you. are inspired by you. Thank we you. celebrate you. So keep doing what you're doing, buddy. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. To everybody else that's watching, thank you for joining us. This is He Arts uh, Extra. He Arts Extra. Thank you for watching. Next week, Wednesday at 9 p.m., same place with a new guest. From me, Siposeti Sislangur, signing out. Day to live. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>